In today's video, we execute a massive multi-vehicle kit bash to create a second war rig for Gaslands, the game of post-apocalyptic vehicular combat. Well, hi everybody, this is Lee from SkirmishWarGames.com. Welcome to the channel. If you watched our last video, then you saw Lynn building her custom war rig for Gaslands, the game of post-apocalyptic vehicular combat from Osprey War Games. Lynn's Gaslands semi turned out great, so today I guess it's my turn. So I'm going to build my own war rig and walk you through the process step by step. Okay, for my build, I'm also starting out with a, a cheap Chinese uh, tractor trailer. This is actually a 143 scale. Um, again, I got this off of eBay from a Chinese manufacturer and they shipped it across the ocean for almost nothing. So, And my plan here is to salvage the uh, trailer portion. I like these dumpster style uh, trailer containers, but I'm going to get rid of the uh, tractor because it's uh, overly large for what we're going to do. And I have a different plan for the tractor, which is going to be... So again, uh, discount and clearance things being some of my favorite miniatures. This is a Red Rain, Red Fury, Dust Studio uh, self-propelled weapon platform from back in the day when FFG was uh, working with Dust Studios. And um, these things frequently go on sale. I think I paid $7 for this. And so my plan is to take this, clip off all the extraneous parts, and somehow try to fuse the uh, trailer portion of uh, my tractor trailer war rig to uh, this. This will be the tractor portion. So we'll see how that works out. It may not fit or it may require some uh, horrendous modifications to make it work. But we'll see if we can do that. And then, okay, so Skylanders was a big thing for a while, then it became a non-thing, and then Toys R Us went out of business. And so they basically dumped all of their Skylanders superchargers vehicles. Um, I think they got down before the store closed completely down to 59 cents a piece. And so I bought a few of them and I thought these things were going to be easy to disassemble. I thought, oh, I'll just pull them apart. They're just toys. They built these things like they were designed to hold nuclear waste. I mean, they're really sturdy. And so it is no fun at all trying to pull these things apart. And to get them apart cleanly is uh, pretty difficult. So um, the plastic, for some reason, it's hard. It's tough in some ways. And it also resists cutting. It melts instead of cutting cleanly. So it's really hard to pull these things apart. But if you do, you get some kind of neat, um, neat little bits. And so I'm not sure. But again, I'm going to try to take some of these bits and fuse them to the uh, dust uh, self-propelled weapon platform and uh, create some sort of a war rig looking thing and then attach that to uh, my Chinese dumpster hauler. And of course, I got this Groomobile that uh, I bought for 95 cents at Walmart. I've got this uh, construction set that we got at the Dollar Tree for a buck. Um, I've got these sprues from the Russian uh, 15 millimeter tanks. I got some, um, I think this is uh, transformer weapons that we got at the Toy Fair last year. It was a little local toy fair and you could just buy bags of transformer bits for you know a few bucks and so anyway so all of that i have no idea how it's all going to work out but um, somehow all of this supposedly is going to come together to form um, a war rig we'll see what happens when we actually get into it and start cutting things and gluing things together and trying to make them work i imagine there'll be some gorilla glue and green stuff involved to hold it all together definitely <laughs> and some dremel and there will be some cutting and probably some crying and probably some bleeding and uh, before it's all done. That's right. Perhaps some profanity. Uh, yeah, I might be overly ambitious here, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so stay with us and uh, we're going to get to the building. Okay, here we are with our Chinese made tractor trailer rig with two open top containers. And we're going to see if we can merge that with this weapon platform from Dust Studio. Here's the detachable 100 millimeter cannon. Our first challenge is going to be to take the tab-shaped hitch on our trailer and try to match it up with the round hole in the weapons platform. So I'm going to attempt to swap out the original trailer hitch with a new one made from a plastic swizzle stick. First I'll clip off the bottom of the plastic pins that hold the cargo containers in place. That makes both of the cargo containers removable. Taking a quick measurement to mark the length of our new hitch. Now we'll plug this inconvenient hole with a piece of scrap plastic so that the hitch has something to stand on when we glue it in place. Two points of contact make it pretty solid, but I'm going to wrap it in wire just to be sure. And there's our new heavy duty fifth wheel coupling. Our next challenge is that our trailer wheels aren't level with our tractor tracks. 
This may require some aggressive problem solving, so I remove the tracks from the Red Fury weapons platform. With a little cutting, I think I can get the trailer posts to adapt to the tracks. But first, the wheels have to go. Yeah, if I narrow down the ends of those posts, they should slot right in. The updated plan requires me to sacrifice another Red Fury model, but fortunately I had one in reserve. So now we'll have tracks fore and aft, uh, plus some extra parts. To slim down our 148 scale weapons platform, we're going to use the rotary tool to trim away these metal grates from the sides and the back. Now that looks a bit closer to being a 164 scale war rig. We'll just clip away these 148 scale seats and control arms. Here's our trimmed down engine compartment. Now I'll grind away the side grates from uh, the second weapons platform because it just happens to fit perfectly in the back of our trailer. So originally I was going to use the Groomobile as the weapons mount on the rear of the trailer, but now I think this is a much better option. And now the plan is starting to gel. I could spend the next five minutes explaining how I tried to make the cab from this uh, Skylander Supercharger Shield Striker vehicle work in my war rig build. But let's just say in the end it didn't work aesthetically or practically and uh, I scrapped it. However, during that process, I did decide to take the toolboxes from the rear weapons platform and move them to the front weapons platform, which ended up being a pretty good look. Now I still need a driver's compartment, so we're going to sacrifice this Matchbox Willy Jeep pickup and see if that's going to work. Chop shopped for the greater good. And here's what you get when you fuse a 164 scale Willy's pickup with a 148 scale Dust Tactics weapons platform. As you can see, I've shaved down the axle posts on the rear of the trailer. And now the trailer slots right in with our rear tracks. Moving on, here are some RoboGear exhaust pipes that I'd like to use. And here's a dollar store fuel tank that fits right into the available space. Maybe that's napalm for a rear flamethrower. So here's where we are at the moment. Now it's time to add some bits. First, we'll glue on our Willys pickup driver's compartment. Not a seamless fit, but definitely close enough for the wasteland. Now we'll secure the uh, cab and engine to the frame with some strategically placed green stuff. Gluing on the RoboGear exhaust pipes, they look great, but um, I'm going to have to move them later. I doubt I'll have enough build slots for a ram, so this is just to keep armadillos out of the radiator. Gluing on a couple of small resin pieces for the side of the engine compartment. I thought these resin window armor pieces might work for the side windows, but they're too big and they don't sit flush, so we're going to scrap them. While I consider my window options, I'm going to weld the trailer to the rear tracks with some globs of green stuff. It took some finagling, but now we have a functional tractor trailer rig. Unfortunately, the rear exhaust pipes don't offer enough clearance, so they're going to have to be forcibly relocated. There, now the rig can properly jackknife when it loses control. So here's where we're at, three different models merged into one. After some consideration, I decided to move the exhaust pipes to the passenger side, which means he's going to need some heat shielding courtesy of diamond plate plastic sheet. Now who's ever riding shotgun won't be roasted by the exhaust pipes. And speaking of diamond plate plastic sheet, here's a top I made for the cargo container. It's reinforced on the bottom with an old Starbucks card. Okay, time to select some of the final parts for our Gaslands tractor trailer build. At this point I'm thinking about a front-mounted missile launcher and a rear-mounted flamethrower. Since the exhaust pipes are shielding the passenger side, I'm going to use a All Quiet on the Martian Front armored door for the driver's side. There's a pretty big gap around the door, so we're just going to pack it tight with green stuff. Perhaps not surgically precise, but good enough for the wasteland. Now we'll glue on our custom diamond plate container lid. Here's another hatch from an all quiet on the Martian front British steam tank. I'll glue that to the top of the cargo container. After mulling it over, I think I'm going to swap out the dollar store fuel tank for this dollar store cement mixer. I can use the mixer for side mounted caltrops, and then I have another plan for this Dust Tactics gun. This RoboGear harpoon is speaking to me. So now the question is can I weld the cannon to the harpoon? Let's find out. I trim them both at a strategic point. Then glue and pin them together, and yeah, I think that works. Okay, let's take a look at where the build is so far. All the pieces are more or less in place, and we're getting ready to spray some paint. I start out by spraying the tractor and the trailer with some weathered steel Rust-Oleum. 
Some of my green stuff work was a little rough, so I'm going to count on this base coat to kind of tie everything together and uh, maybe cover up a few errors. Now we're giving the trailer and the harpoon the same treatment. Get the bottom of our caltrop dropper. We're going to use black stainless steel on the cargo container just to mix things up a little bit. After that dries, we're going to start off our rust effects with some gilded brass and sienna mist. Unfortunately, both those paints were too shiny for proper wasteland corrosion. So after the fact, I went back over everything with some rust-oleum, weathered rust, and that darkened everything up considerably. There's a closer look at the harpoon. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And there's the black stainless steel cargo container with a little weathered rust. Now I'm going to go nuts with this Citadel Riser Rust effect. I'm going to dry brush it on everything and then hope I get some orange highlights to cut through all that brown. Yeah, that definitely worked. It certainly makes the edges pop. Now I'm going to do a little brush work with some different shades of light rust and dark rust. Here I'm using the dark rust to paint the shield on the harpoon. Next I'll dry brush the barrel with some of the light rust. This thing has tetanus written all over it. All this rust created a very cool junkyard effect, but I'm worried we might be a little too monochrome. So to add some color, I'm going to try to sponge on some faded paint. Using an old sponge fragment from a miniature blister pack, we're going to dab a little paint here and there in likely areas. I kept it to a minimum, but I still think it helps. Now I'm going to dry brush a little gun metal on areas where the rust has likely to have rubbed off. Like on the tracks and the wheels. I'll also hit some other areas that could use a little metallic shine, and keep in mind, I'm just making this up as I go. Okay, so that's toned down some of the rust a bit, but I'm still going to have to think about some additional color. In the meantime, let's apply some grime. I like to use a little Nuln Oil in the seams and the rivets. Okay, after sleeping on it overnight, I came back the next day and decided to sponge a little more color on the cargo container, on the toolboxes on the truck, on the uh, cement mixer on the trailer, and uh, just give things a little splash of color so it wasn't all rust and brown. Again, this was just dabbing paint on lightly with a tiny bit of sponge, and it created a pretty cool effect. Okay, the last things we have to do is glue on our rooftop rocket launcher, find a good perch for our exposed crewman, and attach the cargo container to the trailer. But I'm not going to glue it, because the original truck came with two cargo containers, so I can build out a second one, keep it in reserve, and just swap them out whenever I need a different configuration. Oh, and here's a final look at the harpoon. I threw a little uh, gunmetal blue on there just to make it look like a well-oiled machine. Well, folks, that is my great Gaslands War Rig Kit Bash project. I think I'm going to call these guys uh, Shishka Bubba's Hellscape Gumbo. And they're a bunch of uh, rad scorpion and sandworm hunters that occasionally get into a little piracy, perhaps a little aggressive salvaging. But mostly they uh, hunt things out in the wasteland, make gumbo, and sell it at uh, the various Gaslands events. Rumor has it that uh, Shishka Bubba's has a feud going on with the Red Running Gaslands team, so who knows what'll happen if those two war rigs were to ever meet out in the wasteland. Perhaps we'll learn in a future video. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you like what we do here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up, and visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com.